Hey guys, it's Parker here, and welcome to the finale of Valhalla. Um, there will be some bonus videos, so... But, well, other than that, this will be the finale of Valhalla. Happy New Year! May all your wishes come true in a bountiful year filled with health and joy. Happy New Year! I'll leave the closet open in case you want to hide from the noise. Thanks. Alright, let's get to work. Saturday, December 31st. Well, let's see. Gil's in the back getting everything ready. I'll go grab some food I've ordered. They only agreed to work on New Year's if I went to pick it up myself. Are you alright? I'm scared. Gabby will show up at any minute. Relax, everything will be alright. I can assure you of that. Drink something. Maybe that will cheer you up. Maybe. I'll eat for a bit, but keep your chin up. If you get through this, I'll give you, I don't know, a hug. Does that work? A big one. It worked for out there. Everything's said and done. Gotta go. You can do it. Huh, right. Everything's fine. You've been avoiding this for all these years. Now it's time to face the head on. Yeah, everything's fine. Everything will be better if they talk to Gabby. Boss might even give me a hug. I'm okay. Um, hello. Gabby. Huh, come in. Excuse me. Welcome to Vaha. Hey! Uh, you, you talk first. No, I... Well... Some days ago, I got a letter. And even older than getting a letter is the fact that... It was from your sister. A what? My sister's saying a letter? That's the first I've heard of it. What did it say? I don't know, I never opened it. At least not until now. Huh? I figured I should read it with you. Yeah, let's do it. Let's read it. Alright then. Sorry. Just... just that? Yep. Is there anything else in the letter? Maybe on the back? It's just like your sister. I spent days worried about this letter, not wanting to open it for fear of what it might contain. I lost sleep and appetite thinking about it. And after all these worries, after all those problems, after all these years not talking to her, she sends me a letter, a fucking letter of all things. And she just says sorry? Sorry for what? For our fight? For not talking all these years? Ah, now I'm fucking pissed. <laughs> Are you laughing? <laughs> sorry, I just... <laughs> I remember all the times my sis provoked you that way. Like the time where she gave me chocolates labeled 1, 2, and 4 during Valentine's Day. And you were pissed about the lack of a 3. Or the time when you left the unopened beer bottle on the table and she sneakily opened it and took a sip. She didn't tell you she did and you're confused all day long. She always bragged she knew me like the back of her hand. If the letter was supposed to piss me off like that, I guess she had all the rights to brag. Maybe she was being sincere though. She did express to me that she was sorry on more than one occasion. She did, huh? You told me she died from localized nano machine rejection, right? In her heart, yeah. Instead of the massive rejection that always makes the news, her case was more focused. They usually amputate or replace the part and call it a day. Organs are different. The condition made her susceptible to transient rejections. Not to mention artificial hearts and genetic treasons were out of the question. Yep. Thing is, apparently, she suffered with that since she was 18, but kept it a secret from everyone. Why? Hell if I know, I was angry to learn that she hid it. Why didn't she tell me? Was it to avoid worrying me? Was she ashamed? What was it? Wait, how did she live so normally then? She had to use a serum, shots near her heart every three days. Apparently, the serum burns like hell. The shot even left her a nasty mark where she had to apply them. So the thing near her left breast wasn't a birthmark? 
and the rejection was what ended up killing her. The nano machine rejection was what ended up killing her, but they couldn't find what made her so vulnerable. Doctors said she might have missed a shot, or the shots made her other defenses grow weaker. The condition could have just gone nuts out of nowhere, or maybe it was blood pressure. Maybe it was the regular heart attack and the rejection acted afterwards, they don't know. She kept it secret from everyone, so nobody knows. Maybe she had told me about it, I could have helped her, maybe she'd still be alive. Maybe she wouldn't have faced it alone instead of just dying her to sleep. Thinking about what is won't bring her back. Eh? I spent so much time having myself with what is after he told me she died. What if I waited to cool down a bit back then? What if I just saw my fears at that very moment? What if I apologized earlier? What if I had given a chance to research and soup thing back then? And the amount just increased threefold after the last shot you did other day. But today I realized something. Having such regrets of the dead is a hollow effort. You're alive. You're here. I can make amends with you, but I can't make amends with the dead. I can't apologize to her like I apologize to you right now. Chill. Leonor, she's... She's resting now. She's just resting after having that heart condition all these years. She didn't have to face it alone though, if only, she only... So, let's celebrate her life and achievements. If we are to mourn, let's mourn her together. If we are to honor her, we'll do it together. Together? Lena was a fun-loving person. The best we can do right now is try to lighten up, even if it's only for a moment. I need to ask though, did she really start to complain about chest pain shortly after I left? No, no. She didn't get visibly worse after you left or anything. Everything was actually too sudden. She did complain about chest pains from time to time, but that actually goes way back before you left. Back then, we thought it was just acid reflux or something. God, so I even blamed her deaths on you. I was just too angry back then, and part of me just wanted to put the blame on someone or something. And you didn't deserve that. Sorry. Hey, I'm sorry too, you know. We both had things to apologize for. Don't think too much about it. I should have been mature and not shout at you either, so... Let's just call that water under bridge, shall we? Are you sure? Of course I am. So, how'd you find me exactly? Eh, eh, um... Well, have you heard of a message board called Danger You? I have, yeah. Well, the truth is that I visit it from time to time. Another day, I read a thread that discussed the bar. And the description of the bartender sounded just like you. Are you mad? No, not mad. More like dumbfounded. Hey Jill, can you tell me what the problem was back then? What sparked that fight? Weren't you happy with my sister? Well, hmm. Back then, I didn't know what to do with myself after I graduated college. I went in and pretty much hated my last couple of years there. It's not far fetched to think that I only tolerated being there because your sister was with me. Had she stopped supporting my studies, I would have quit right then and there. And then after graduating, I got a very good job offer that she accepted on my behalf in no time. She kept saying it was the best for me and my future, but I was livid. Why did she have to do that? I hated it. I didn't even know if I wanted to go there, but she still insisted so much. Like she was forcing that burden on me. And then my became our future and she started talking about marriage. You're going to get married? Not like we didn't think about that down the line, but she mostly teased me about it with it. But the thoughts only scared me. I don't think I was ready for such a commitment, especially considering what she did. I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I wasn't going to let her decide such a big thing for me. I mean, she could be really pushy from time to time. Like I said, I pretty much passed college thanks to being with her, and that was partly because she was so pushy. Even if she had the best intentions, she could be abrasive from time to time. And it rained down on me at that moment. She took it upon herself to make that choice for me. What if I stopped her when she, once we got married? What if she suddenly decided to cry my life to her knees after marriage? I knew her. She would do it thinking it was best for me. But what about my freedom? My say in the matter? 
So that's where he stopped loving Daenor? No, no, no. I never stopped loving her, which is why I hurt so much, but I have to understand. I don't want to wake up 40 years old and work in a job I hate. Just out of routine, getting used to it. I want to break from everything for a while to put my thoughts in order. Regroup myself, think carefully about what to do next. I can understand. I sometimes felt the same, although I'm not even in college. So that's what led to you two fighting, huh? Heh, <laughs> you know, the word fight makes it sound like we exchanged blows or something. It's all silly when I think back to it, tragically silly. Maybe I was the one who started the fight, getting all defensive about not wanting to take that offer. Perhaps if I didn't overreact to her arguments of wasting this huge opportunity, maybe she wouldn't have lashed out at me this bad. It could have been avoided if I just kept a cool head and talked about that with her. My sister said something like that. Eh? I told you she mentioned on more than one occasion how sorry she was about the whole thing, right? should have listened to her to the end, but instead I kept pushing her. I should have kept a cool head instead of letting my jealousy take the best of me. It was her offer, not mine. She just stopped projecting myself so much into her. Something like that. Leonor. Hehe. <laughs> We are quite the hotheads, you, me, my sis. To be the mature one, you know? Play your role correctly. Heh. <laughs> but why didn't you come back, Jill? Did you end up hating us that much? Did the break include us too? No, it's just that. Remember when your sister was giving a class and you broke a window? How you didn't want to see her for fear of being scolded? Why, well, my sister wouldn't have scolded you. But I was afraid, dead afraid. I couldn't bring myself to face your sister. But I faced her back then. I was like seven at the time. Why couldn't you do it? It's not quite the same. And in perspective, no matter what reason I come up with, it will never make sense. Everything sounds very stupid when I look back, you know? Not that it makes things easier. I won't ever get to speak to her ever again and it feels bad because it's stupid. I swear, you and my sister are meant for one another. You both moved on after all that, but neither had the courage to go back and say you're sorry. <sighs> and like I said, myself over those past mistakes won't bring her back. I miss her so much though. We were together all the time, always talking about dumb stuff. I wouldn't call my parents useless, but she was the one I could always talk to. I feel her absence every day. Everything is just so... quiet now. She was an amazing person. Yeah, she was an amazing person. Eh? It was fine and all, but we should be celebrating her life. If she was here, she would tell us that there's no fun in sulking for so long. She told you that all the time. The same way she told you to stop rubbing things in people's faces. Both figuratively and literally. Hey, I was eight back then. So, let's have a toast in her honor, shall we? A toast? Yeah, let me get you a drink. A, a drink? Don't worry, trust me. Let's make something to toast Gabby with, preferably something sweet. Grab this for a sec. Oh, okay. Ahem. Leonor, I know we're watching from the beyond right now, as I give a drink to your little sister. It's obvious to me now that we both meant to make amends at some point, but we never got around to it. I can't apologize to you anymore. At the very least, make you rest easier. So know that I'll look out for Gabby in your absence. I'll make sure Gabby grows to a fine woman, just like you were. I'll always be there for her. I'll be sure the little brat doesn't face the same problem you and I had. Hey! Want to add anything? Um... I always miss her. Don't say it to me, say it to her. That's a bit... Come on, just this once. Uh, I always miss you, sis. Sis. Sis, you idiot! Why'd you keep that secret for so long? Idiot! Idiot! <laughs> I always told you everything. Was that enough, you idiotic idiot? Ah. Hey, Jill. Promise me you won't be like that knucklehead. That you won't keep stuff like that to yourself. Only if you promise the same to me. 
And I promise you won't fight. I can't do that. Eh? You and I are both just dickheaded. Sooner or later we'll caution on some opinion. But what I can promise is that I won't run away like last time. We'll both cool off and talk it over like the adults we are. I'm not an adult. Let's face it, you've been more mature than I have. <laughs> hey, did you mean what you said? That you look after me? I'll always be here for you, Gabby. I mean, I'm not Leonor, but... I wouldn't dare leave my little sister alone. Chill. Hey, hey, what's this, this is toast? Right. For Leonor, faithful sister and girlfriend. Cheers! Cheers! Um, so... How about this drink? Can I drink it? Do you like it? Take a sip. It's not bad. Why not drink it then? You're with an adult. You might as well break the alcohol taboo here and now. But, right. Now that I think back to it, didn't your sister give you beer once as a prank? Oh yeah, that. It was April Fools. I should've known better when she offered me apple soda. I put bubble gum on the soles of all her shoes in retaliation. She walked funny. I might jaw her for the rest of the day. Yeah, but did you know you got my drink that time? Huh? She gave me a beer and it turned out to be an apple soda. Oh. Did she get back at her? Well... I did hide all the dildos in the house that night, only to find she knew how to use a cucumber. Oh. Uh... And as a follow-up, she used the same cucumber in a salad days later. She said, So, do you like eating meat for lunch? Chill? I'll tell you when you're older. Or never at all. Hey Gabby, do your parents know you're here? They think I'm at Clary's actually. Who? Oh, she's my best friend at school. And this Clary knows you're using her as an excuse, right? Of course! How would she have covered for me otherwise? True. Will you go to her house afterwards? To be honest, I didn't think that far. Maybe I will. I do live in another district, but Clary doesn't live close by, so... Hmm... Well, it can't be helped. I live nearby and the streets aren't exactly safe at night. Why not stay with me tonight? Uh, are you sure? I don't live in a mansion, but I'd say it's comfy enough, at least to spend the night. Sure, I'd love to stay with you. Great. Hey, does your dad sell at that bakery? His bread was really good. Yep, he opened a second branch last year. So, he's looking to his man? I think he got into a partnership with a friend in Motor District. The guy saw an opportunity after realizing Motor District has almost no bakeries. I still remember when your sister and He started shouting, I knew it! I knew I fucking knew you were a lesbian! Mark one for daddy! I think he had this bed with an acquaintance of his ever since my sis was 12 years or so. Dad says sis was into girls. The acquaintance didn't believe him. He bet a beer on whether he was right or not. That beer bottle is still in the fridge. It's even labeled Sweet Victory. Heh. <laughs> Your mom and Lena never made up, did they? <sighs> I guess that one wasn't as simple as the uh, said one too many things argument. Mom was always supposed to hide society and her circle of friends, a lesbian daughter was a no-no. I'm still on my sister's side for that one though. Mom, Mom didn't reject her because she herself was homophobic, she did because her friends were. To Mom, the opinion of her circle of friends was so smart than her own daughter. How did she react to her death? Don't know, Mom and Dad broke up two years ago. They did? They never got married, so there was no proper divorce. I haven't seen her since August, I think. Did you two fight too? No, she just hasn't showed up. You must have felt alone, huh? I've been there. A bit, but I'm not alone anymore, thanks to you. Huh? I thought there was going to be a party here. Oh well, over here. Party? A small New Year's celebration. Want to stay for it? I, I don't want a kid to burden. Don't worry, you won't. You only get cola for tonight, though. No alcohol. It'll give us time to catch up even more. I can introduce you to some friends. Are you in? If you don't mind me. Great. Hey, Alma, come here. Does someone want to introduce to you?
Did you have fun? Yeah, I had a lot of fun. Yep, I also got to meet a cat boomer. Why did your boss hug you though? She's that kind of person. Now let's sleep. You're a dozing off back there. You're right. Good night, Jill. Play some more tomorrow. Good night. Friday, February 3rd. This is good. Really good. You have no idea how long I wanted to try some curry. I remember I meant to eat some, but then I had to pay for some drinks I spilled on the floor. That screwed up my budget. It's the least I can do after being such an obnoxious client. Yeah, about that. Mind if I ask something, Mr. Timothy Mercury? So you know... It's a small city. Turns out two very grateful girls soon became regulars and both of them were related to you. So what's your question, bartender? Call me Jill. Two questions, actually. The first one is, why did they brown you as a traitor? Because he killed the other guy? I don't know, it sounds weird considering the other guy assaulted two little girls. It was a cover-up. The guy was my superior. A high-ranking officer like him assaulting innocent civilians? That would be unthinkable. On paper, at least. On record, I hurt the girls and killed them before another unit subdued me, then I escaped from their custody. In reality, That's all I needed to know. Sorry for bringing that up. Didn't you have another question? Yeah, how'd you build this restaurant so fast? It's a small city. Turns out two very grateful girls chalked me down to thank me. One of them is rich and the other noticed they smell like curry. Heh. Those two are really nice girls, huh? They didn't deserve what that bastard did to them. Excuse me. Oh, speaking of the angels. Timmy, two special curries please. Oh, hi, Jill. Friday, January 20th. Oh, God. I can't believe I'm actually here. The concert will begin any second now. Yeah! Wow, i never seen her so openly excited before. Don't talk too loudly or startle her. It's, it's always nice to see her so happy she doesn't give a damn and lets herself go. You sure you don't mind me? Of course not! That way I won't be the only one with a little clue as to what's going on. Is it true that you served this Kira Mickey girl at the bar? As amazing as it sounds. Really nice girl, if a bit oblivious to the risk some people represent. How so? She doesn't mind stalkers and such. Oh. How's her wounds? I'm feeling fine, eyes healing nicely, and I can sleep better at night. Just what transpired inside that bank. It's not important anymore. What's the point is that Cell will get me a job after a heal. She will? He's rebuilding a new armor set for me and he wants me to be a bodyguard. I'd be paid for something I do anyways and I'll get to spend more time with her. That's nice. I like to spread out and help more people, but it's a nice start. You want to be a vigilante then? Maybe. Yeah! She's coming out! It's her! It's actually her! Look, it started. Are you here, Jill? This song is for you. What? Saturday, February 25th. I can't believe you actually made me do that sleepover thing. You didn't have to accept, you know? Shut up. I'm having a good time. See, even Gabby is having fun. Relax a bit. Yeah, whatever. You know, Alma, you remind me a bit of my sis. I do? How? You always manage to get a reaction from Jill. Sis always said that Jill acknowledging your presence is the best way to know sh You're talking too much, Gabby. Aww. It's different with you, though. With my sis, Jill was more frustrated. Like this one time where she bought her a shirt that you're talking too much, little girl. A shirt that what? That had a pick of a cucumber on it. A cucumber? Uh, um, ow! Just what are you doing with my hair? Sorry, got stuck in one of my fingers. Seriously. 
So I'm a bit like Leonor then? No, no, you just remind me of her a bit. Moreover, my sister wasn't as, um, as, as? As. What this girl is trying to say is that you're tits and ass. You could build a leader and a half out of them ass. That just means there's enough to share with both of you. Just share? You're talking to Alma. Friday, January 15th. Am I castrating him? I tried for an hour to convince him it was a bad idea, and I finally got to him. We finally moved to the bedroom, and it turns out the guy has a weird implant where the t his testicles should be. It's basically a removable ball sack. I suppose the guy really liked the fantasy and made sure he could live it out properly. I once saw a guy at the hospital in the emergency room after having been castrated to fulfill a fantasy. I wonder if it's the same guy. I have enough problems with that one, you know. Just one what? Eh, uh, um, hehe. <laughs> But just listening to one of your anecdotes. You told me about the Neo Tijuana thing and now this. Don't you have a more subdued story? Come on, Joe. You're an adult. You could take that much. Shut up. Well, last time I spoke with my mom, I asked her the story of her daughter. Turns out her name was Anna. Huh. And now you pretend it's a surprise? Quiet, you. She fought against nanomachine machine rejection for most of her life. She even lost a girlfriend she made in a hospital with sickness. Apparently sometimes she got out of treatment, a truck hit her and killed her. But even then, she was amazing! She was? Eh? Yeah, she kept her studies while still in the hospital. She was a self-taught honor student. Not only that, but she also ranked among the top 5 candidates in at least 3 college admission exams. She also played the piano and guitar. Well, being confined to a room does that, I guess. I mean, fully able-bodied people can barely do half of that. But she practically accomplished all that by herself. And she also beat nanomachine rejection, a disease that only 2% of humans suffer and even less survive. It took a truck and truck to take her down and she was great! And to think I'm sort of like a sister. Heh, <laughs> silly Becky. Honey, did you say something? Hmm, I did not. Weird, I swear I heard somebody call me Silly Becky. Hum again? It's not uncommon for me to hear stuff from far away and think I've heard it nearby, but... You're the only one nearby that knows my real name, so it's weird. Oh well, as I was saying, the boss that guy. Sunday, August 27th. I guess it's very part ways, huh? city. I can only really foster my, my identity effectively around here. I really want to thank you, Chief, for the second chance you gave me. If you ever cross paths again, I... Gil, we're leaving for like a week and a half or something. Don't be so dramatic. But I... And you're taking care of my apartment. We will cross paths because I live there. The time you spend setting up a useless farewell could be used asking me things about the place. Like where the switches and valves are. But I already know, they're in that control panel you made. But I like talking about that control panel, I'm proud of it. Speaking of excessive likes... Chill! Stop calling Armitage! She'll take care of her four ball just fine. I'm not worried about him, I'm worried about me. I've never been away from four this long, I don't know what to do. You'll do just fine. You did pretty well for at least 25 years before fighting him. Yes, but... We're leaving! Oh yeah, before I forget. I left you a box of condoms on the first draw of the death skill. You what? You what? Hey, if he wants to bring his new girlfriend or whatever here, I want him to be ready. Oh, but just one condition. If you're gonna fuck I grab it, stay away from my room. I have too many pics of my emoto there and I don't want their eyes soiled. Emohu? Little sister. Then just say little sister. Yeah, whatever. First stop, Panama. That was a really good game. I mean, it was a really game, but it was official novel. But yeah, I really enjoyed the story. Just from a viewpoint of one character, and you can like see the whole world just- the world building was great. 
So yeah, um, thank you for playing and thank you for watching Valhalla. There'll be some bonus videos from Valhalla, so just tune in next time. I'll see you guys next time. That'll be it for Valhalla.